Again, I'm on the road and trying to answer some questions. I'll try to get as many as I can today. The first one is from Byron F. in Woodstock, New York. What he's talking about is uh, the fact that a lot of people don't feel I'm electable. Well, uh, they're entitled to that feeling, but I think it's important, and I don't say just wait and see, I am electable. I can be your president. I run across people that say, oh, you, you're my ideal choice for president. Problem is, I'm going to vote for Hillary because I don't think you can get elected. Well, I won't get elected if you don't follow your instincts and stand up for your ideals. And if I meet your criteria of ideals, then talk about that I am electable and I will be a great president. I trust you. The next is from Thomas uh, in Wa Watosa, Wisconsin. Excuse my pronunciation. Uh, and his question is about uh, concealed weapons. And somebody must have said that I'm for concealed weapons. Uh, of course I'm not. I've never advocated that. I don't know where that would come from. And so I have no control over what some people will put on the internet. I have control of what I'm telling you right now. Thank you. Next question is from uh, Patrick S. in Sacramento. Uh, he's making the point of why is mainstream media so intent on making the race between Hillary and Rudy? Well, first off, because uh, these two people are supportive of the military industrial complex. They're also supportive of all of the uh, five uh, companies that control our information system, the five communications companies. And so where do you think that Hillary and Rudy are going to spend, or even Obama for that matter, are going to spend all these millions that they're raising? They're going to raise, they're going to spend it with the networks. Now, why would the networks want to bring me to the attention of the American people? I'm not going to spend any money to speak of with the networks. Not at all. Uh, I just don't think that they're doing a good job for the American people. When when the communication system, the media, the fourth estate fails, and the third estate, the Congress fails, the people are in deep trouble, and we saw that when they both failed with respect to going into Iraq with an invasion that didn't have to take place. The next question I have is from Randy C., and that's in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, and uh, what he's asking is, do you feel the Energize America plan is viable for our energy issues? I'm not entirely sure I know what you're referring to with Energize America. I do know this, that uh, I don't know of any real plan out there to bring about energy. I am very much for getting off of gasoline, and it can be done in five years, and getting off of carbon in 10 years. We need to put a carbon tax on. We need to build as many windmills as possible. They can create electricity right across the country, and that can begin the electrification of our transportation system and a good deal more. So uh, that's the approach that I would take on an energy plan. I have my book coming out, Citizen Power, that will have a whole section on energy, and that will go into a lot of detail in this regard. Uh, the next question I have, I think I've handled both of those. Let's take the next one. It's from uh, Randy S. in Caldwell, Ohio. And he's saying, I've heard you say in an interview that you supported Kucinich in 2004. I'm wondering what happened to change your mind and how did Dennis, how did Dennis feel about the national initiative? Well, you're right, I did support Dennis in 2004, and I tried very hard to educate him to the National Initiative. Didn't even phase a thing. It was very discouraging. I spent a lot of time, I would say, 20 hours or more with his people. He never gave me the time of day. Didn't even meet him until I filed myself. And so today, we're very close on a number of issues. I think Dennis, and Dennis is a fine person, make no mistake about that. He's, he's quite spiritual. Uh, I think he's, he's afraid to name names. In, as you know, in debates, I have no problem talking about Hillary and Obama and the others. Uh, Dennis talks about the problem but doesn't name names. I think you've got to name names. You've got to hold people accountable so that there's real differentiation. 
Dennis is uh, politics as usual from the liberal side, and that I am opposed to. And that's the reason why I think the first and foremost thing that needs to be done is to empower the American people with the national initiative. Go to the website, nationalinitiative.us, and you'll learn more about that. The next question is from Don M. in Houston. Uh, he's talking about the contractors that, uh, that uh, Cheney put in place in, with KRB, the study uh, back in when he was Secretary of Defense. And of course, what we have now, and he poses the question, when you talk about the Iraq War, why don't you challenge active senators to cut off funding for any private contractors in Iraq, which is half the reason Bush and Cheney want to stay there? No, it's, on, it's not even half. It's none of the reason. They want to stay there to control the oil. Uh, and I'm, I'm prepared to admit that there are unintended consequences in life. When I filibustered the end of the draft over a five-month period and forced its ending, we don't have the filibuster. And I'm proud of the fact that Bush does not have the boots, boots on the ground to invade Iran. But the consequence, the unintended consequences of what I did is they used all these private contractors, and there's 50,000 of them. There's a lot more than that. And they say, well, they do a KP duty or they do motor pool duty. They also go out and kill people wantonly, and that's what's got to stop. I become president of the United States. I'll correct the unintended consequences that I was responsible for by ending the draft. I'll sign off now and go to other questions. Thank you.